Welcome to 1217B, everyone! Efficiency champions, I need your help! How can I make 12 videos more efficiently? <laughs> oh, make them shorter? I guess that makes sense. Here are relevant confessionals from irrelevant people! I'm just kidding, you guys are all super important. I just don't have time to say them all, but I do have time for this. Milo Jacquet updated his periodic table. Cool, 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 cool. Also, here's some news from Sumner the Pie Guy. Hello, it's Nerd again with another episode of Spreadsheet and Statistic News. I'll be brief this time, and please bear with me. Thank you. TAC continues to fall on the normalized ranks leaderboard, while Spicy now has the second highest average normalized rank. Green Tree is now fourth in terms of mentions, and Spicy is one mention away from TAC's total of 49 now. Jamster Jim has created this amazing tool that will allow you to compare any two towers of your choice. Please go check it out, but don't use it while others are. Thanks. I now have 130 suggestions for the sheet. Thank you for all the support. But I have to say I'm disappointed in quite a few of the suggestions. Cough, cough, the ones mentioning No Man's Land. But there are quite a few good ones, like Milo Jaka's comparison tool suggestion, which has been implemented. Thank you for listening to my ramblings, and please enjoy the episode. Thanks, Pi Guy. That's some real circular logic you've got there. Here are our final 10 towers. Also, Mr. Tweester removed his voice bubble. The wonderful background music is by Alex Lion0511. So SpicyMan33 got upset at Midnight Light for breaking the cycle of acronymizing each other's names in the last episode's confessionals. But maybe Midnight Light didn't break the cycle. If it just so happens that Ping Pong Cupshot's new nickname is Otwid Tumit Figgletam. When counting votes this time, I removed clearly fake votes, but I won't tell you how how I did it, so loopholers won't be able to loophole. But doing that led to a vote count of 563 voters casting 711 votes. Lower quantity, but higher quality. So as you all know, the 17th prompt was a reboot of the 8th prompt. It was, write an acronym that spells out the word it's describing, with the first letters of each word, or the last letters of each word, or both. I would show you my examples, but the contestants' entries, which you're about to see now, will explain everything for themselves. And a few more things to remember. Only contestants' highest scoring entries will count, and the very lowest scoring tower will be set aside for book burning in this episode. Like always, we will reveal each tower's results in the order they placed last time, which means that SpicyMan33 is up first. He's the first tower to be up first for this 1x1 reveal twice now. Spicy summoned the power of his hefty triple response prize to say these three responses, which are sorted from highest scoring to lowest scoring. Blindly attacking troops lurking everywhere, shooting highly inconsistent projectiles, standing for both Battleship in the front in red, and you guess Gegets in the back in blue. You know, to save time, I'm not going to read the others, but yes, you are seeing a freaking Barry Scott acronym at the bottom there. Spicy gets a score of 52.50%. By the way, the horizontal axis of this graph is now representing standard deviation, so you can see that all three of Spicy's responses were of similar controversiality. Joseph Howard also had a triple response prize, but the best of his three responses was Be idealistic, outdo diverseness, imagery varies, environment replete, system evolves. This is an impressive 10-letter double-sided acronym, with the front spelling biodiverse and the back spelling ecosystems. But Joseph, your sentence lengths, oof, they're not so diverse. Anyway, all three of Joseph's responses were jaw-dropping 10-letter double-sided acronyms, although the last one misspelled Mike Ramsey in the back. Biodiversity gets an exquisite score of 57.34%, and because you only need to beat one other tower to be safe this time, Joseph, you are guaranteed a spot into the final nine. Third place Midnight Light is up next. Midnight's higher scoring entry was Pip, a level 3 nun, did refer Otto, Madam Eve, which spells palindrome in the front and the back, and on top of that, every single word of this sentence is on its own a palindrome as well. This response got mixed reviews on 12 Central, but what about in 12 voting overall? Wow, top spot. You won! Worth peso. Joseph thrown away. Also, real big standard deviation on that one. Mr. Tweester said, People outside keep every monster over nifty global objectives, which stands for both the smash hit new game Pokemon Go and Epirals, which I'm guessing is Meester's original Pokemon idea. Who's that Pokemon? It's 
EP rolls. Anyway, this response only had 9 words, so I would expect it to incur the wrath of simplistic voters. But it doesn't, earning a healthy score of 55.11%. Interesting how the scores so far have been placing at nearly identical distances from each other. Fifth up is Otwid Tumit Figgletam, who said, The ever-growing change humankind nurtures, outdoing leagues of generations yearly, which stands for technology. That's a pretty darn good acronym, but notice that PPCS's second acronym spells out adventures. Remember that. Ooh, 50.23%. That's still above average, and it continues the pattern of equal spacing, but it doesn't guarantee you safety yet. But the scores of your two entries are the closest out of everybody's so far. 3 time winner Yasoen said, Softening opulence on tenderest healthful embrace, which stands for soothe in the front and gentle in the back. Although the double acronyming is super impressive, this response is only 6 words, and we haven't seen a single response this short since Twow8. Did voters consider you to be concise or lazy? It's time to find out. 56.90% putting you in a comfortable third place. I guess the stressed out voting republic needed a bit of gentle soothing to calm down at the end of the day. As we all know, Crafty7 coincidentally placed 7th last time. Hork Hork that is so funny. With a response of cool automatic learning contraption, use logarithms and trigonometry on request, standing for calculator, will Crafty7 place 7th once again, or will the stars tragically drift out of alignment? 56.59% earning you 4th place. We can only hope that the next 3 towers all place above you, so you land right on that sweet spot 7th, Crafty. The Mighty Midge, who gained both criticism and praise for his half-hearted, or perhaps poetic, country response that stood for both Azerbaijan and ah, actually scored better with this response. Collective ownership makes many uneasy. Nevertheless, individuals share their stuff, which stands for both communists and Epsi surf which is a term used to describe an enslaved serf with epilepsy. I guess serfs are the type of people most likely to become communists anyway, so hey, it works. What did you get? 51.85% guaranteeing you safety. But that means Crafty7 is not getting 7th place, so sad. Now, only Tak Ajnan and Greentree have yet to place, and Otwid Tumit Figgletam has not been declared safe yet. Only two of the three people I just mentioned will be continuing onward in Twow. But before we find out who, we need to listen to ads from Hurry Tree and Tantasar. Pay attention! Do you like those redesigned books from the final 18? Yes, of course you do. Have you ever wanted your own custom Twow book? Yes, of course you do. But you most likely do not have the required software or talent to design your own book. But it's your lucky day, because I, Huri Churi, can make you one. If you join the Twelve Discord server, what is wrong with you if you haven't already, you can use my suggestion box to request me a custom book. That is right, your very own custom book. I have already designed over 50 books, so what are you waiting for? Huri's custom books. Get a book with a look. That's straight. Okay, frontrunner Tak Ajnin, you haven't quite been on your top game lately, but you know what, that is fine. Your response was, <gasps> Also adventures? Plagiarized off of Ping Pong Cup? Otwid Tumit Figgletam. Gosh, that crime must have been effortless, eh? From you. Just kidding, all the entries are entered in privately, so there's no way plagiarism could have happened. But that is a crazy coincidence. Anyway, Tacky Tak, you get a score of... 54.62%, which gives you a pass into Twao's final 9. Things are not looking so good for Otwid Tumit Fig- You know what, this nickname is just too cumbersome, I'll just say Papux. Our current efficiency champion Greentree is the last Twower to rank, and either he or Papux will be leaving Twao. It all depends on whether Greentree's response, discriminated individual souls, adored but ill, loving infallibly towards you, standing for disability, can beat the score of 50.23%. Will the addiction of placing really high due to incessant boosts, or the addiction to placing really low to be considered efficient, cause a tower to overdose? Let's find out which behavior is truly more dangerous.
Ding Pong Cup shots is safe. Goodbye, Green Tree. This elimination is especially painful to me because I was on your team in 12th Central. But I didn't show favoritism because I promised to join the team of the first person to give me a full 12 team flare color key and Green Tree was legit the first person to do that. Every time another efficiency champion falls, so does my heart. Although the curse has ended your life on Twow, it has not ended your legacy, and the saplings that follow in your footsteps will remember you forever. Last time. This time. Stats time again. Midnight Light won this time, making her the first Twower to win a rebooted prompt. That means Riley and Midnight Light are the first Twow winning duo, getting first place on the same prompt, more or less. As I expected, Midnight's entry was by far the most controversial, with the Mighty Mage's country entry at second. Ping Pong Cup Shot's ultra efficient technology response was the least controversial. Crafty7 had the highest scoring, worst response, reinforcing his consistently consistent consistency. Believe it or not, Eliminated Green Tree had the fifth highest scoring worst response, actually placing him in the top half of worst responses. Also, triple responses did not fare so well. Psych Ramsey. At least with Crafty's Ode to Mike Ramsey, both Twowers eliminated in 1216 got a proper acronym. I would estimate that out of the 22 entries, 14 tried to actionize the front, 2 tried to actionize the back, and 6 tried to do both. So at this point, 6 living Twowers have scored a round victory, whereas 3, Crafty7, The Mighty Mitch, and surprisingly, our frontrunner Tak Ajnin, have not. Every round that passes, the number of the living victory list goes down by either 0, 1, or 2. But that makes me think, is Tak Ajnin really still our frontrunner? Don't get me wrong, Tak is a great Twower, but let's see what the Twow predictions tell us. Whoa, look at that. For the first time since I began Twow predictions 7 episodes ago, the top spot has finally changed. Now, if a stranger off the street were to ask me who I thought would win Twow, I'd have to place my bets on Joseph Howard. In other news, Spicy and Papux each fell two ranks due to mediocre acronym scores, allowing Yasuan, Crafty, Midnight, and Meester to rise. And if we really want to brand a new efficiency champion, if we really want to do that, well, there's no clear outlier when it comes to the predictions. The bottom three are all pretty much neck and neck. But if you sort Twowers by their best rank so far, well, then it's a different picture. The Mighty Midge is the only living Twower to have never ranked in the top six, yet alone the top three. You're not supposed to be infecting people with efficiency curses! <sighs> You're right. And besides, the Mighty Mage's alter ego Sam Billinge has reached second place in the past. To summarize, here's who's still in and who's eliminated. If you're eliminated, you won't be able to send me any more responses for upcoming Twow Season 1 prompts. Anyway, these are our final 9 Twowers, who will now deal with Twow's 18th prompt. What is it? Well, after seeing how close the top 2 prompts scored last time, I feel like second place prompt 129, aka the parentheses one, deserved a little bit of recognition. So, it's time to reveal the 18th prompt, recommended by Michael. I know how much you guys like Michael's prompts, but seriously, this one's good. Write a response of up to 10 words that completely changes meaning if you read only the stuff inside parentheses or only the stuff outside parentheses. So, a cool example might be, I'll give your mom the ride to the store file rooms. You can read it just as I said it, or you can read just the stuff in the parentheses, give your mom the ID to the room, or you can read just the stuff outside the parentheses, I'll restore files. As you can see, letters, spaces, and full words can be inside or outside parentheses, and you can use as many parentheses as you would like. The goal is to create three coherent stories, one on the inside, one on the outside, and one of both. Hopefully, they'll all have different meanings. And as always, if you have to go under 10 words, that's okay. I'll also be okay with sacrificing spelling or grammar to create a more clever intertwining of parentheses. So remaining Twowers, as we leap into Twow18, submit your responses to me, KerryKH, via YouTube PM by August 9, 2016 at 10pm UTC. Everybody can submit two responses to this prompt, and Midnight Light, you can submit three. In Twow18, only the best scoring one will count, and the Twower with the lowest score will be eliminated. See you then! Actually, a few more things. Here's an audio confessional from Harry M. Hello Twowers, viewers, and everyone else out there. 
I am Harry M, and um, I am one of the great members of the Twow Discord chat. I really like Twow, and I, I, I wish good luck to all the people that are in the top eight, or is it currently top ten? I don't think the top eight has been revealed yet. I'm not sure. Well, anyways, good luck. That was nice, Harry. But from now on, I'm not going to be accepting any audio confessionals anymore. Please send text. It's just so much easier to deal with. Also, I said that once we reached final nine, we could have twelve Sudoku. Well, that'll come in twelve eighteen A. But for now, you can look at this huge Sudoku puzzle I made as a Christmas present in 2010. But the recipient never solved it. I was rushed, so it might not even be possible. But also, here's a happy Hanukkah Sudoku, even though it's not Hanukkah. Images in the description. Bye.